so yeah, it just start here with Pope now. Obviously, you're back in the truck series here. Pretty tough day. You just had an accident out there. So your mindset right now being back in the truck series. Well, it's honest. I mean, aside from what just happened, it's been good so far. The yeah. two practices that we did get went, went pretty well. And qualifying, I, I just made a mistake um, over in the tunnel turn, uh, clipped the apron, and it just brought her around. So mm -hmm. uh, guys are working hard getting it fixed, so they should have the primary truck uh, for the race. But uh, honestly, it's, it's so far been good, uh, showing some speed, and uh, hopefully hopefully we can get a better result in the ARCA race yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. So this is your first truck start since Martinsville last year. So kind of out of the blue you know what was this planned for a while you know why are you back this weekend we've been planning it for for a couple weeks we we when we were sitting down uh, over the winter trying to determine what we wanted to do on the truck side we knew we wanted to do some truck races but we needed to do what made sense so uh we looked at the the double header weekends with arca and truck and those ones seem to be uh, for me the in terms of seat time the thing that made the most sense because i can just go right from that garage to this garage and get a lot of track time and yeah. and, and learn the track a lot quicker than it would just one one race per weekend so mm -hmm. uh just try to do the the races that make the most sense uh for me as learning um mm -hmm. you know we certainly don't think i'm ready to go full-time in any capacity of the trucks yet just take baby steps get get a couple races under our belt and see where i'm at and then and then uh make maybe make a few more starts next year yeah you're getting used to the august series but the trucks i i bet the mindset is a lot different the competition is so much tough i mean there's a national nascar series so how much do you think martinsville last year getting that race you did the full race with a, with a solid team had a good race so how do you feel like that really prepared you mentally for this race do you feel it did i think it did quite a bit um obviously the two entirely different racetracks but yeah. you get an idea of the competition like you said um you know the guys like craft and solder you know ben rhodes you know, those guys the full-time guys you have an idea of how they race and mm -hmm. understanding the level of, of uh, the level they compete at is is really important you know i'm not going in completely blind uh, so i'll have a little bit of that in the back of my mind mm -hmm. on how hard they race so uh, it was it was definitely helpful just to get that quick that that seat time you know uh for the just to get an idea of how these guys are going to race and uh, i think uh, i think that'll come into play here today yeah are you more prone to go towards the more experienced drivers for advice or maybe some of the younger drivers since they kind of know what you're going through they're more your age they've been through the ranks you know around this time in the sport so you know what is that is it either or, or? honestly I, I i've leaned on more of the veterans uh, when i was making my start at martinsville matt crafton came into the uh, the rookie meeting that we had and mm -hmm. uh listened to him talk and then after that that meeting i i pulled him aside and he and i talked probably over the weekend probably a couple hours uh, wow. he let me sit on his box before the race and just pick his brain a little bit about the line of martinsville so i think the veterans because they've been here so many times they know how to go fast there it's a lot a lot easier to get information from them not that not that the rookies the now their knowledge isn't good you know, i just feel like there's more to be gained by talking to the craftons and the solders this year yeah. is that is that different with arca or do you feel it's it's possibly the same there is it kind of a different level i mean there's a couple i mean with with, with arca it's it's a, a little bit different than k&m but the idea is the same of these this is that's a pure development series yeah. with 90 percent of the field is is in the rookie meeting you know yeah, yeah. uh so I, what I've what I've tried to do is, is anytime you know Frank Kimmel, fortunately, still comes to a lot of the races as a, as a mentor. So I'll try to wow. find him, track him down, and, and see if uh, I can talk to him a little bit. Or um, you know, with a lot of the short tracks, it's it's more or less just seat time and figuring out how to go get around these mm -hmm. places. But yeah. uh, and, and I'm very fortunate to have Bill Henderson, who's my crew chief, uh, on the box because he's got a lot of experience a lot of the race tracks. So having him to to talk to has been good too. Yeah, Pocono is one of those new tracks for you. Ran the race yesterday, didn't go too well, but how much does translate from an ARCA car to a truck? I guess you're just learning that now, you know, is it is it, are there more similarities or is it really different? There's there's quite a few differences, I'll be honest with you. There's yeah. a lot of a lot of the the nuances that you learn in an ARCA car, you kinda have to throw out the window for, for a truck. Mm -hmm. uh, but the big thing has just been uh, you know, for me it's like even in school, the how I learned something was just doing it over and over again. So anything that allows me to be on that racetrack you know as much as possible is good so going out and doing the arc car and just seeing the racetrack seeing the lines and seeing you know lift points and throttle points that's mm -hmm. all really helpful the information to take over to the truck yeah absolutely so we're talking about your arc season obviously it started off uh, really rough out in daytona had that big wreck on the front stretch can you kind of go back to that you know to that lap you know when the accident happened you know what, what was your mind going through the accident and how it really played out for you from inside the car well, right before the wreck, I was pretty happy because we were running like seventh or yeah. sixth or something, and and we were right up. We, we were thinking, you know, we'll get a top five out of this, or everything goes the way it's going. And 
Um, I was kind of just hanging around the bottom and I felt uh, my quarter panel on the right side get you know, tap and I started to see the nose change direction and once it, that started I knew what was probably going to happen and then as it kept going I knew you know we were in trouble and uh, the initial impact was that one it took the it took a long time to, it felt like it took a long time to get there yeah. to the wall but it hurt the most of uh, anything that happened and then the rollover was was pretty slow so that one wasn't terrible it was just uncomfortable being upside down for as long as it was mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know sliding down the the front straightaway was, was kind of it was it was surreal almost you, you got sparks coming in through the side window there's a there was about there was a little bit of flame coming front of the hood but it died out mm -hmm. pretty quick and and just all the noise and stuff going on and then when we came to a stop i was upside down for five minutes or so mm -hmm. um but fortunately the arca safety tr uh, crew and daytona safety crew they got me rolled over really gently and, and cut the, the roof off as fast as they could but also as safely as they could and yeah. got me out uh, safely and uh, Unfortunately, there was no additional damage to to what had already been done in the wreck. Yeah, did you feel pain when you hit the wall? Were you were you up, or did that maybe come after they got you out of the car? What was the pain like? The the initial impact was just knocked the breath out of me, which kind of that's uncomfortable in and of itself. Yeah. And then after that that initial hit, I was sort of came to and and because I didn't go unconscious, mm -hmm. uh, and I I felt I uncomfortable on my back, and then as the rollover happened, I felt way more uncomfortable on my back. Mm -hmm. and then when, when they set me back down, I knew something was was wrong because uh, the it was like a feeling of the breath got knocked out, but it wouldn't go away, and I, I was just kind of still very consistent level of pain in my lower mm -hmm. back. And uh, you know, obviously we know what happened with that, but mm -hmm. it was that that initial impact was was the biggest uh, hit, you know, yeah. the biggest uh, sense of pain that I had. Yeah, absolutely. It didn't take much long after that race before we started seeing a whole bunch of support from fans, from pretty much every single team member and driver out there. So. When it comes to you, when you were in the hospital for that night, you know what was the support like? Did you really feel it, or that maybe come a little bit later? I felt, and by the time I got my phone back, uh, was probably forty-five minutes to an hour after the wreck because they, I didn't get to see my, my parents had my phone and I didn't mm -hmm. get to see them for a while. Um, and my, my scrolling through my home screen, it was like a, a book, <laughs> like read, seeing all the, the tweets and the Facebook posts and. The, and I had a uh, Scott Edwards, who's an ARCA driver. Uh, he ran a Daytona. He actually came to the hospital. He and I met mm -hmm. randomly on an airplane uh, a year before, and wow. so we got to know each other. And he came personally to the, the hospital to come see me and my family, and that was really really cool. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the fan outcry was was amazing. I mean, the, the the my friends back in Asheville and up in Maine or in Texas and Florida, where my family is. Uh, everyone was incredibly supportive of it and were making phone calls and stuff so that was that was really neat to see yeah did you think you maybe not would be able to race again after that was there any doubt at all i mean for me i knew i wanted to keep racing there was no doubt that i wanted to do it but i my dad and i kind of had to sit down and uh about what we don't we didn't know at the time what the doctor was going to say so we we're just going to prepare yourself for whatever he says we need to listen to and if he says he can be back in three months, we'll be back in three months. If he says six months or a year or however long it's going to take, we need to listen to him. Uh, so I was preparing myself for that, but I always knew that I wanted to, to keep racing. Yeah, absolutely. So you were back at Daytona pretty much that next week. You were in a back race, and when it came to getting back to the track, you spoke with a lot of drivers. When it came to seeing that track again, you know, was there ever any ever any feelings for you? Was it a little spooky, or were you were you already over it? Honestly, I no. I mean, I just I just love being at the racetrack. So yeah. be, I mean, there was. A lot of pain that first week, so getting down there was kind of a challenge. But just mm -hmm. being there and seeing my teammate Austin and, and uh, JJ Yaley was running the, the 22 truck um, for us as well, and being there to support those guys mm -hmm. uh, was great. And you know, and, and watching Austin finish finish second was really cool. I didn't actually get to stay for the race; we went back to the motorhome because my mm -hmm. back started giving me trouble. But just being back was it was cool, and, and seeing everybody that that's been there for you, so mm -hmm. it was it was cool. Yeah, when Eric Amarola, he had a, a similar incident, I guess it was a little bit more severe, um, he just came back a couple weeks ago, so when you see something like that happens, obviously you have the perspective now, you know what it's like, so when it comes to your overall feeling of racing, you've seen the best and now you've seen one of the worst, so right. when it comes to something like that, what what goes through your mind, because you know what it's like now. Um, I mean, it, I actually was watching that wreck when it happened, and, and I just remember thinking, I was like, I think a lot of people were thinking the same thing. It was like it didn't almost it almost didn't really look like it was a hard hit, but you sure. know we're hoping he's okay. And then when he was still in the car, I, I got really concerned because, like you said, I've been in that situation before. Yeah. And, and actually going back and watching my race on TV and seeing how long it took me to get out of the car and get out of the car and see where people would be concerned mm -hmm. about Eric and and I was getting nervous for him. And 
just hoping that they would be able to get him out. And, and when I saw that it was a similar engine, I mean, it just goes to show that it was safe. NASCAR and ARCA do a great job of keeping these cars safe, but inherently the sport's incredibly dangerous. And um, I think we're lucky that that's the most severe injury we get, even though back injuries are really severe. But, you know, it's good that it's not anything worse than that. And he's able to be back. I'm sure he's over there practicing now and, mm -hmm. and, and doing well. So I'm, I'm happy to see he's back. But it does... It does change your perspective because you take it a lot more seriously when somebody takes a little bit longer to get out of the car yeah. or needs help getting out of the car because you understand where, what they're going through. Yeah, and you said you looked over footage of your wreck, and I know Ricky Craven, he flipped at Talladega one year, and he said, when he when he watched the footage, he said, uh, I really feel bad for whoever's inside that car. Yeah. <laughs> and now when you watch your wreck, do you believe that that's you? Well, it was funny because I we got back on, um, I guess the race was, a, what was it, Friday or Saturday or whatever day it was. Yeah. We got back the next day, or yeah, we flew back that next day, and just kind of hanging around the house. I flip on Fox Sports 2, and sure enough, they were showing my race, and it was about 25 laps to go, so I was like, Dad, get in, let's watch. Yeah. And then my mom immediately walked away, because she right. didn't, didn't want to watch it again, but <laughs> uh, we were watching, and honestly, I thought it was pretty cool, uh, yeah. the crash. I mean, when now, after the pain and all that was yeah. over, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool, man, that's <laughs> awesome. If you're going to go out, you know, go out in the ball of flames, yeah. I guess, but... Go out um, on YouTube hits. That's right, that's right. Um... And it was, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was definitely like surreal, like going back and watching it, and, and, and okay, that's that's what happened. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was is a new perspective for it, but it was it was it was it was pretty pretty intense. Yeah, you feel like you gained some respect after that. I think uh, the biggest thing that I gained because I was out of the car for three months yeah. was I I always from the moment I was in you know, elementary school and saw a race, I wanted to do this, but I think I made me want it even more. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was that close to not being able to, I had to hit at a different angle or a little bit harder. Maybe my my back doesn't feel properly, and I don't right. get to get back in a car. And even the three months that I was out and seeing you know uh, other guys drive my car, and, and, and you know Mason Mingus did a great job in the 33 when he was in mm -hmm. it. But just seeing other people drive it, and you, you want to be back, and you want to be with the guys, and, and that that made you made me want it and even even more and appreciate what I've already gotten to mm -hmm. do. Um, so I think that was the biggest thing that it did for me. The first time back in the car, Elko, I believe you finished 11th. Yes. Um, you know, a solid run, definitely after being out for a couple months. Uh, I bet, you know, in practice, when you get back in the car for the first time, you know, were there, were there any feelings at all? Or does the mindset completely just switch like a light switch when you get back inside the cockpit for the first time? Well, fortunately, we had done a motor mile test okay. uh, a, a week or two prior to that race. Mm -hmm. So I had some track time, uh, albeit a different racetrack. But yeah. I, for me, it, it's always it's been a light switch where you... you once you're at the racetrack, you know you have a job to do, yeah. you know, and that's to go drive that car so you can't think about anything else. Now, mm -hmm. I, now that being said, I haven't been back to Daytona or, or been to Talladega yet, so that mm -hmm. might be a little different going back to a track that I know that's the, what what can happen there. Yeah. So, uh, But going back to Elko, and then I think we did Pocono or, or whatever race was after that, and, and just understanding you have a job to do, it's time to go, go to work. And, and be the best driver that you could be. Yeah. So recapping your season uh, since you've been back, I believe seven races, just assess your personal performance, your team. You've had some reliability uh, issues, but uh, you've had a couple of 11th place finishes. So to kind of assess your season, and how you feel it's going. Honestly, the performance I think has been has been really, really good. It's yeah. just we can't seem to finish races lately. Yeah. Um, you know, Elko was a great foundation. Uh, Pocono, we ended up running into a, a, an issue in practice and. I went to a backup car, but even with that, we actually ran decent. Um, Michigan, we we out we were the uh, fastest uh, Wintron car of Michigan and mm -hmm. qualifying, and we're running okay. And then ran into somebody's oil and got up into the wall, and that busted our oil pump. And then uh, Madison, we were we were contending for a top five there for a while in that race, and sort of fell off. Uh, we ended up on a restart. We restarted second, and mm -hmm. uh, some shenanigans happened on the restart. And, uh, moved us back to about 10th and we were running in 10th and running down the guys and then um, Tanner Thorson got a little over aggressive and spun me out on the last lap and then finished 11th again and yeah. um, and then um, it just seems like the speeds there you know uh, Iowa we were really fast and uh, last week we were okay and then this week we were really fast and just uh, the reliability just hasn't quite been there but mm -hmm. I mean the speed I know is there I think my driver performance has been okay I think mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking in the tracks well uh, for, for what we're dealing with you know for my inexperience level um, and the guys are busting their butts to get these cars ready to go and, and making them fast and we just, we just got and once I think we finish that first race in the top 10 top five we'll, we'll get a snowball rolling mm -hmm. up some good finishes absolutely what are your plans 
Um, obviously, you're doing a lot of this year. Any more truck races? You know, how quickly are you looking to move up the ranks here in 2017? Um, obviously, you know, I don't want to take it too fast. Yeah. Uh, uh, the plan right now is to run most of the ARCA races. We're not going to be at uh, the dirt races or the road course. We're gonna, I think, uh, we're gonna leave that to uh, some other guys because okay. uh, we want to focus on the speedways and the short tracks, mm -hmm. things like that. And then I'm hoping for another truck race later in the year, uh, which we haven't announced yet. And then next year, um, the goal is to do, do uh, more ARCA races than we did this year. Mm -hmm. um, we made, made, Potentially the full schedule, but we're not sure yet. It just kind of depends on where our funding mm -hmm. funding falls, and uh, and obviously we want to do some more truck races next year. And, mm -hmm. and right now, for me, it's important to not rush my development. And I think the the idea of doing ARCA next year is we know that he's got speed this year. Let's go and capitalize on it next year. And then if next year goes well, you know who knows? We might be in a truck in twenty mm -hmm. uh, nineteen, you know, yeah. twenty twenty. So. Hopefully, hopefully soon we'll have some stuff to announce on that. Yeah. Are you trying to kind of market yourself towards teams? Obviously, you got the '66 team here. Are you trying to build relationships early? Because as you said, right. um, it's only a second race. Are you trying to build those relationships strong? Honestly, you know, I, I do try to build relationships with potential sponsors and things like that, and, and people that that might want to help. But uh, Tim Self, uh, the owner of the of, of AM Racing, he. Uh, he and I have worked really, really well together. So as of right now, my intention is to, is to stay at AM Racing for, for the foreseeable future because Tim has been a very good owner for me. and he, he has been very good at putting me in positions where I can best succeed with the goals that I've laid out for myself. So uh, right now, the plan is to stay here at AM. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Yeah, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.